Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, ever merciful. Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you, dear viewers. Welcome to tonight's nice lecture organized by the UK Talim Department. As per our tradition, we'll start the program with the recitation. Can I request uh, Mulana Rahil Sahib to recite the verses and its translation, please? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن أظلم ممن افترى على الله الكذب If I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the accursed in the name of Allah the gracious the merciful <clears throat> but who does greater wrong than he who forges a lie against Allah but while he is invited to Islam Allah guides not the wrongdoing people their desire to is their desire to extinguish the light of Allah with the breath of their mouths but Allah will puff but Allah will perfect his light however much the the disbelievers may dislike it he it, he it is who has sent his messenger with the guidance and the religion of truth that he may cause it to prevail over all religions however much those who associate partners with Allah may dislike it Jazakallah Jazakallah Rahil Sahib Mullah Sahib um, welcome, dear viewers, to our 147th English lecture today with an appropriate title of The Rising of the Sun from the West and the Promised Messiah's al Islam's Vision for the West. It's our great pleasure to welcome Nasiruddin Sahib, who's serving as Naib President UK, and Mulana Rahil Ahmed Sahib, who is serving as the head of the UK History Department. We have great privilege to have both of these here who are serving in various capacities in the Jamaat and are very dear friends of the Talim Department. So without any further ado, if I could humbly request Rahil Saab and Naiba Mir Saab if they <coughs> start their lecture. Jazakallah. Nasir Saab, I think you're muted. Okay, it's a change. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Um, I wish to thank uh, uh, Nadim Rahman Saab and Shakil Saab for all, allowing myself to address this very eminent now series of lectures that have given since uh, number 147 now to be heard. And we have had very scholarly people address. I feel quite humble that he's included me to address you. I'm not much of a scholar, but we do have one scholar with me who is Milana Rahim Saab, who is the 
qualified John the student from the UK that has been tossed now here in the UK's mod as on the history department. He's our resident historian in the UK for history as well as our archive charge. Well, I'd like to start now. I was relying on Sheikh Mohammed with you, Ms. Mazaira. Originally, Wakar Ahmed Saab had approached me some time ago to talk about history of the UK because he understood that I was involved in some way in the uh, overseeing this project that has been uh, entrusted to us by Hazrat Mir Mamim to the UK Jamaat, but under the auspicious of uh, Amir Saab UK, Rafi Kamal Yad Saab, he, he requested me to assist and look at this project and guide with, with, with a team in, in, in the, its fruition to where we are going to go, inshallah. So the last three years, I've worked very closely with Malana Rahil Saab, and the objective is that we collate the correct history of the UK, that is just not just in the center, but in the regions as well and around the country, and to, to create a cohesive record for the Jamaat, but that also covers really the guidance is given to us first by the founder of the Ahmadi Muslim Jamaat, the Hazrat Mizzou Allah Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, and how he guided his followers and how they should um, behave and how really what the objectives of, the, of, the, of them was. And then to move on to the Khulifa of Hazrat Mizzou Islam, the Prophet of Islam, his caliphs, and what instructions they gave to the various missions of the Jamaat. So namely, the mission that we're going to focus on is the connection with the British and the, the British history of, of the Jamaat here in the UK. And the idea is that today we have, and Amisa mentioned this in the Majisama meeting, the last but one, where the work of Malan Rahil Saab and the team has produced the title that you've seen as the first volume on the history of the UK Jamaat. Now, one would think, how is Hazm Islam involved in the history of the UK Jamaat? And according to knowledge, the establishment of Jamaat Ahmadiyya uh, in the UK was in 1913 as a Jamaat. And before that, missionaries did come to the UK and there was an establishment earlier on as well, uh, uh, temporarily working and then moved to, moved to London. So people were like, how is that, how is Hazur, um, al Islam, you know, connected to the UK history and, 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 how, and how, is, how relevant is it to what we do today. So when one looks at the history of, of, of Ahmadiyya, our own purpose and what we are, uh, our intention of joining or the elders of our, our, our families that joined this community, it will come to light why this title is quite relevant and what hopefully it will reflect on what your purpose is as listeners, as Amad Muslims, and as generally others as well. And the mission of Hazim Islam, as we know, in a nutshell, was to connect mankind, reconnect mankind back with the Creator and also to create mankind among each other and to bring back the unity of Allah and to take away innovations in Islam in particular and only, but also to bring man out of the darknesses of the innovations that they had created about their concept of religion, of God, which had created an un unpeaceful world in somewhat, in that the objectives of, as we'll hear, of some of the people in the name of religion, as we know today, has been quite wrong in, 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 in with some of these Muslims that are creating havoc. But early on also, we saw a different sort of havoc being created among the lives of other people. And it was in the name of religion, but it has actually had, had other objectives. And so the idea is that we will show here today how Hazrat Muslim Islam was really the truly the first missionary of Islam in the UK, not just of uh, Islam and Media, but actually Islam. And he really championed the faith and how he fought an onslaught against the religion of the Islam, against the, the name of the Holy Prophet and how Hazur then turned the tide back with very little resources apart, of course, the power of Allah. But he, as a human being, was on his own and how God in, in, empowered him and how he turned the tide back to and eventually created missions in the UK and an awareness and upon his, and as Rahil Sahib will explain, upon the demise of Hazrat Islam, every, practically every village, every corner of the, of the West, but in particular in the UK, had heard the message of the Prophet Islam and had seen, and there were no, remember, there were no radios, there were no television, there was no, the only way of um, 
communication was through the media of writing, through books, through pamphlets, and through newspapers. And how in villages, newspapers, you know, if, if we have time, we'll show you how in villages, newspapers, which were read in the public halls or in people's homes that people would come and read, mention that this man has claimed to be a messiah, and he claims that our Lord has died. And this was a, a big affront. And at that, there was a time when in the West, especially in the UK, the only knowledge of Islam was a negative knowledge, as is today, but at that time it was hardly mentioned. And how suddenly the Islam that you heard about, they heard, was about the, the Mahdi of Sudan, who claimed, who claimed to be the Mahdi and who were massacring, and it was on a jihad. But that was it. But suddenly the Christian missionaries were overcome by Hazrat Islam. So I'd like to introduce Rahil Saab and ask him to take over, and then I will interject if needed. Rahil Saab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakallah and Saab for this uh, thorough introduction that you've given. Um, the verses that were just recited before the lay listeners, whoever you know is tuning in, a renowned exegete, uh, you know, from the ninth century, uh, whose name was Muhammad ibn al Jarir al Tabari. He wrote that because the verses, of course, speak about the you know Islam prevailing all other religions. He, he says that this would occur at the time of the coming of the promised Messiah. So in, in this lecture today, we'll see that how this, this, this prophecy of the Holy Quran was fulfilled. And also, what is the purpose of our arrival here in the UK? Did we come here for economic gains um, or, what, or was there a greater purpose for, for, you know, for our arrivals or our, our, our elders who actually came here you know, uh, and you know, uh, made great sacrifices uh, for, you know, for us? So the discussion about the, the, you know, the known history of um, Islam in the UK often begins with the interactions of the Christian world with the Muslim world. And, and, and it goes, you know, historians go as back as the 7th century and they say that there were Muslims who were walking the British Isles and, you know, um, and that, you know, they had these economic, you know, trade relationships, um, you know, uh, so all of these things are discussed. So, you know, as far as the academic work that we have available to us, it includes um, information on economic ties, alliances, missionary excursions from the West to the East, diplomacy, colonialism, you know, immigration, all, all these things. But the focus of, you know, uh, um, our history or, or the first volume of history that we've covered so far is to explore an entirely different Islamic approach in the West. And that is one that is not based around economic ties or trade, but is primarily and purely a missionary uh, endeavor. And the, the, the approach of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, um, uh, you know, since its, incep in, since its inception has been of entirely re religious and missionary in nature. Therefore, you know, the purpose of the establishment of a mission in the UK or whether anywhere in the West, you know, it, the purpose was to spread the true message of Islam to the indigenous people. And that was the purpose, you know, of, 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 of the coming of the Promised Messiah, Salaam. So the Prophet Muhammad actually explains this, and he says that the era of the Holy Prophet وسلم, was known as Takmil Hidayat, which, which translates to the, the, the perfection of guidance, i.e., the, the complete and perfect book which was revealed to the Holy Prophet. وسلم, you know, after that, there's no new law that is needed, right? But the time of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is Takmil Ishat Hidayat, and, and that translates to perfection of propagation of the guidance, i.e., Completing that 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 propagation and, and and perfection of that propagation of the of the law and the message of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu brought. So, in order to understand our history, it is paramount that we revisit the era of the Promised Messiah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, you know the 18th and the 19th century. Let, let's quick, quickly go over it and, uh, because we have a lot to cover. The state in which the Muslims were, you know, it was it was basically you know uh, uh, you know applied for the for the Muslims in, in India, especially where they lost. You know, majority of their temporal power in the world, and you know, and this was capitalized, of course, by the zealous Christian missionaries and the efforts in converting the Indian population to Christianity. And Muslims at the time, uh, you know, one of the major reasons they were not, you know, being able to defend themselves was wrong interpretation of you know Islamic teachings. You know, jihad, as we know, one of them, abrogation of certain verses is one of them. Jesus' physical ascension, uh, you know, being the other. So, so based on this reason, the, the Christian missionaries were capitalizing on this and they were converting, you know, thousands upon thousands of Muslims to Christianity. And I, I would state, you know, some of these facts. But before actually stating these facts, we, we need to understand what were the common interests of the church and state at, at the time. So 
we, we, we find that, you know, the interest of the British government in, in India at, at, at the time specifically, uh, you know, uh, it, was, it was apparent through the lectures and meetings, it was to convert the, the, the entire Indian population to Christianity, although they did provide, you know, freedom of religion, which the Promised Messiah has praised. But they, you know, they thought that, for instance, Sir Charles Wood, who was the Minister of State for India, declared that the acceptance of Christian faith was a bond of union with England and an additional source of strength to the empire. Then there is, um, you know, Sir John Lawrence, who was the Viceroy and the Governor General of India. He said he attributed actually the mutiny of 1857 to their own timidity as Christian nation in matter of religion. And then he added that nothing more easily will conduce to the strength of our power in India than the than the spread of Christianity. And I would like to share, you know, some of these uh, clippings with our, uh, you know, um, our uh, listeners out there who, who are, you know, um, look looking at the stream right now. And and um, I, I hope you guys can see the screen. Um, if someone can confirm that. So this is what um, you know. One of the, the the history of Christian missions from Sir Charles Rob Robbins, while I was referring to, uh, you know, talking about what what, what I was co co quoting there. And then it says that, uh, that then you know the great support accorded by these government officials actually aided the development of missionary work and subsequently the Christian you know conversions in India. So Sir Charles Robbins, you know, as I was referring, he says that this development of missionary work was greatly aided by the wholehearted support accorded by some of the officials who were responsible for the government of the Northwest. And among them, he, you know, he names many of them. And then, you know, going forward, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, the first attempt, you know, to list the number of Christians associated with the Anglican and Protestant missionary communities in India was actually made in 1851. And in 1851, there was a, there, there were about you know uh, the consensus came back about 91,000 Christians in 267 congregations, and after the mutiny of 1857, uh, 7, as I said earlier, a great expansion of missionary you know effort was witnessed, uh, which was aided by the gov government of officials, and subsequent Indian census you know reports they showed that in the year 1881, <clears throat> the Christian population increased to about 1.8 million. And then the following census in 1891 to about 2 million. And then going forward during the decade of 1901 to 1911, Christians in India increased from, you know, about 2.6 million to 3.5. So, so, you know, based on this, um, you know, a, this is someone, uh, I think the, the, those who have read the books of the Promised Messiah have heard the name of Dr. Imaduddin. You may have not seen the picture of the individual and that's there. He, he was actually, you know, someone who was formerly a Muslim, you know, who Dr. Imad, Imad actually means, you know, um, uh, you know, um, a great strength to the to the deen, to, to the to the religion of Islam, right? A pillar to the, to the religion of Islam. And this is someone who's a pillar to the religion of Islam, actually, who, be, you know, becomes a Christian. And he's he's actually writing to, you know, one of the conferences that was happening at the time in, uh, you know, um, I, I, I think it was in the United States, and, and he mentions that there was a time when the conversion of a Mohammedan to Christianity was looked on as a wonder. Now they have come and are coming in their thousands. So this shows you that the amount of impact, you know, these Christian missionaries were having upon the Muslim population. And, you know, we hear, we often hear um, the, the great efforts of the Prophet Muhammad he wrote Brahim Ahmadi, he challenged the Christian missionaries. But until and unless you don't understand the circumstances in which the Prophet Muhammad you know, appeared, you, you can't fully appreciate, you know, the efforts of, 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 of the Promised Messiah And at the end of this paper that he wrote, he actually, you know, appended a list of 117 converts from Islam to Christianity who at the time were occupying influential positions in the state or in, in the church. So I, I can go on and on about uh, this, you know, this, um, these statistics. Um, but lastly, I want to men mention, you know, uh, another Christian missionary, you know, um, uh, known as John Henry Barus, uh, who was an um, you know who was an American clergyman known as the architect of the Parliament of Religions, and he also moderated the event in 1893. So during his tour to in India, he delivered many lec lectures, and in one of those lec lectures, he, he he actually said, "I might sketch the movement in Muslim lands which has touched with the radiance of cross the Le Lebanon, the Persian mountains, as well as the waters of Bosphorus." And which is which is which is the show harbinger of the day when Cairo and Damascus and Tehran shall be the servants of Jesus, and when even the solitudes of Arabia shall be paced and Christ in the person of his disciples shall enter Kaaba of uh, Kaaba of Mecca, and the whole truth shall at least uh, you know at last uh, there be spoken. And 
again, you know, Sir Charles Robinson, he mentions that should the increase which has been taken place during the last 30 years be maintained in 50 years time, the Christians will be one in 21 population in 100 years, they'll be, you know, one in five. And in about 160 years, he says the whole of population of India would become Christian. So that was their purpose. And this is what they, you know, they, they had hoped. Uh, and then you see again uh, below, it says that the most striking increase has been in the Punjab, where the rate has been 333%, which have resulted from the work of, you know, American Presbyterian and CMS missions. So why is Punjab so significant? You see here, this is exactly the place where Allah the Almighty, you know, just as they planned, and Allah the Almighty says in the early, early Quran, uh, you know, that just as they planned, Allah the Almighty also planned. And we see that the promised Messiah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, so oftentimes you, you hear this allegation uh, that, you know, uh, the promised Messiah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you, you know, came in India, is, 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 in, is in significant land, and all, all of these things, this allegation. But, but it, it, it truly comes from someone who's ignorant of the facts, you, that, who, who does not know that this was a time where the, the majority of the Muslim population were living in India, and, and the onslaught of Christian missionaries was unprecedented in, 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 in that land. And you see here, there's, there's another quote which, say, which says that the central region of Punjab chosen by the Christian missionaries as the heart and of the evangelistic um, uh, activities was also the catchment area for Ahmadi initiation. The two adjoining districts of Amritsar and Gurdaspur, the former the hinterland of the sacred city of the Sikhs, and the Anglican missionary headquarters and the la latter the homeland of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad were by the early 1890s at the center of competition between rival religious minorities. And here you have, you know, uh, some of the pictures of these uh, Christian missionaries. Uh, uh, the picture on the left, right in the middle, you have Henry Martin Clark, you know, the famous debate that we are also going to speak in this, in this, uh, you know, lecture, inshallah, going forward. Um, again, uh, you know, with the promised Messiah, known, known, known in the Jamaat as the Holy War, Jangi Muqaddas. And you also have sitting in front of him in a, in a, in a white turban, uh, Dr. Uh, Penno, and this individual also actually came to Gadian, and he and and, and you know, he spoke to the companions, you know, about uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's claim. And on the right, you you right in the middle, you have Reverend Weifbecht, and this is a, I think he was a German, and and all of these individuals were challenged by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to come forward, and you know, um, if, if 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 they truly think that 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 uh, you know uh, Christianity is, is is a superior faith or it teaches you know, something that is uh, superior to Islam. So the Promised Messiah's, uh, you know, defense of Islam actually began, uh, as we know, you know, from the 1860s when the Promised Messiah, Islam, uh, you know, before, you know, his claim of being the prom Promised Messiah, he um, he went, uh, you know, to work in Sialkot under the instructions of his father. And until then, you know, when he, when he was very young, he would have these different discussions with Christian missionaries and other Hindu uh, you know, individuals with regards to Islam, and he was he would answer their allegations. And one of the signs that we know from the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with regards to the coming of the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that he would break the cross. You know, yaksiru saliba, and as we read in Hadith, the understanding of this sign, you know, became evident with the advent of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in an age when the Christian conversions were on on the rise. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, you know, described this in the following words. He says, "What does breaking the cross really mean?" Pay, pay great heed to this fact that the time of the advent of Messiah has been associated with the time of the triumph over the, o, o, over the cross. And it was the Messiah that was to come for this purpose. It is therefore very clear that the purpose of the advent of the Messiah was to completely falsify the Christian ideology with arguments and proofs that were to be strengthened by heavenly succor and miracles. He would show how the religion of the cross is completely false and would make this manifestly clear to the whole world. And millions of souls would come to know and admit that Christianity in reality cannot be as a means of mercy for mankind. And then he con con continues. And this is a time, you know, which could be regarded as a time of hopelessness, you know, for, for the Muslims. But it, it, this was the time also when the promised Messiah, you know, who not only responded to this, you know, Christian onslaught with courage and intellect, but he rather challenged their leaders, you know, to come forward and present the superior teaching that they, they, they you know, they claim Christianity to be. So, you know, coming to the example of, you know, there's so much to mention, but one of the examples is from 1893, where, you know, a famous de debate, which is also in the Jamaat, is known as Jange Muqaddas, uh, the, the Holy War, right, where, you know, the Christians uh, at the time, you know, for, you know, there was a place known as Jandeala, they, they, they actually challenged 
the Muslims. And for weeks, there was no response at all from the Muslims, you know, and they basically were saying to boycott the, you know, this debate and don't speak to these Christians at the time. And it was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who came forward. But I think it is very important. I think it's actually important to read from their own these missionary reports that these Christian missionaries were sending to their missions. So, the, you know, one of the uh, famous Christian mission societies known as the Christian Mission Society (CMS), and you know, this is published in their uh, um, in their uh, reports that they were sending back to the missions. And, and you read here, for instance, it says that uh, the challenge was issued in as much as certain uh, as certain Muslims had shown a great desire to dispute with the Christians, and had inter and interfered much with their work. There was much doubt in regards to the expediency of this challenge, and after it was done, it was found that the Muhammadans were in great fear, lest they should be unable to find an able champion. They finally selected one who, though counted by them as a, um, a heretic, is bitterly opposed to Christianity. This man, Ghulam Ahmad, has affirmed that he himself is the Prophet Ahmad who was to come, denying certain prominent Muslim teachings. And of course, you know, these Christian missionaries, when they were reporting back to their missions, of course, they, they were antagonistic against the Prophet Muhammad of Islam. But it truly shows you that who the true champion of Islam was. Just on the right, you, you, you will see uh, right, right, right at the bottom, the gauntlet thrown down produced a great uh, consternation. The Muhammadan were aghast. What could they do? And yet something must be done. They addressed themselves to various societies for the aid of Islam and bestirred themselves to find a champion, but none appeared. Three weeks went by. The wager of battle still lay unaccepted. Jandiala Muhammadans were in dire straits. When to their intense relief, they found a defender in a certain Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian. Right? This man is somewhat a remarkable personage and one of great interest to the missionary you know, so so this is something that is coming from their, you know, from their own works. This is not something that's coming from just the Ahmadiyya Muslim community that we're claiming here. But this research actually shows that at the time, it was it was just it was only the promised Messiah who, who were able to silence these Christian missionaries, and they were very much aware, you know, of, of the efforts of the promised Messiah. Another one example that I've chosen um, just just for today. There are many to go, uh, you know, to present, but you know, the time that we have at hand is is from 1899 and this is from Bishop Lefroy. This is a bishop on, uh, of Lahore who served as a bishop from 1899 to 1912. And he basically delivered um, you know, a lecture on, on the topic of the innocent prophet. And what, we, what he was trying to convey was that the, the, the Isa is the only innocent prophet and, you know, and the, every other prophet is Nauzubillah, uh, God forbid, is not in, in innocent. And he, he was touched and, the, and that, that pro every other prophet was touched by say, Satan. Um, and at that time, it was only the companion of the Promised Messiah, uh, you know, known as Hazrat Mufti Muhammad Sadiq Sahib, anhu, who stood up when the lecture finished and he challenged the bishop and, 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 and he said, what you're mentioning is absolutely wrong. We believe all the messengers of Allah to be, uh, you know, um, to, to be pious and innocent and righteous. And this is from the Homeward Mail, you know, this is reported here, uh, you know, if you're able to read, um, and in, 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 inshallah ta'ala, all of this information that you're seeing now will be pub published in the first volume of the his history of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, UK. Um, and, and this is what we see here. And also on the left, we also see, and then what happened was after the Promised Messiah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Mufti Muhammad Sahib comes back to Qadiyan, the Promised Messiah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam writes, you know, uh, he publishes two separate announcements, you know, and because there was another lecture, which the, 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 the uh, the Bishop of Lahore had organized, which was uh, on, on the topic of the living apostle, meaning that the Isa is the only living, living prophet. And it was the promised Messiah who wrote, you know, a short reply before knowing the, con you know, the, the contents of his, his, his paper. And he refuted every single point that the Bishop was going to raise. And there from there, you know, started a whole correspondence of, um, uh, uh, you know, through the pages of Review of Religions, the Prophet Messiah, you know, challenged, and many newspapers actually said this is, you know, um, you know, a challenge from the Prophet Messiah Islam, and the bishop should come forward. But the reply from the bishop was that, you know, uh, he's he's very very busy, busy as always, and he cannot, you know, come forward uh, to, you know, to uh, cannot answer the challenge of the Prophet Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is um, moving forward. Um, you know, as I was mentioning earlier, these, uh, you know. Uh, the, the, the defense of the Promised Messiah wasalam, and how he established the superiority of Islam was, was something that's, that, that's apparent from their own papers. 
And I think this is something that we need to show the world. We need to show, you know, our um, other, you know, fellow Muslims that what, what the service of Islam that the Prophet Muhammad Islam has actually done. In their own, you know, our history of missions in India, you see, you see here, I think, um, it, it, you know, it, it's uh, from Julius Vichter. He writes that Ghulam is a remarkable man. He writes clever books and in such elegant Urdu, Persian, and Arabic that he's able to challenge his opponents in the most graceful Arabic literacy, uh, uh, in, in the most graceful Arabic literary. Articles to admit or to disprove his divine mission. Besides this, he has also inaugurated an English magazine, The Review of Religions, the lengthy pages of which he fills almost single-handed. And he has not only read the Old and New Testaments thoroughly, but, it, but is likewise acquainted with certain, you know, apocryphal, uh, apoc sorry, ap apocryphal, sorry, uh, works such as, you know, the Gospel according to the Bar Barnabas. And also on, on, on this right-hand side, you see, they, they have published the picture of the Promised Messiah والسلام, and it reads, and I think this is something that's very important because the, the way the Promised Messiah والسلام, you know, defeated Christianity was by proving the demise of Isa because that was the very means that they were using in order to you know, convert these Muslims to Christianity. And he writes that, but what has most disturbed the uh, Mirza's mind and, and uh, incessantly exercised his ingenuity uh, ingenuity and wisdom by which the world the, the world knew not God and rightly enough is the combined problem of Christ's remarkable death and his wonderful resurrection unlike the Mohammedans un universally who believe Jesus Christ to be alive and yet Christianity to be false the Mirza has seen apostolic truth and has come to the conclusion that Christianity stands or falls with the life or death of its founder so this is the basis upon which the Promised Messiah, and, and they knew what the Promised Messiah was actually doing. Hence the stress laid by him on the death of Christ. All his writings resound with one note that Christ died like all other mortals and is no longer living. He says in great, he says in great concentrate, sorry, uh, is, the writing is quite small. Concentration of mind. If Christ is really alive, and will come a second time as Christian assert and Muhammadans commonly believe, then is Christ greater than our Prophet Muhammad So they know, and this is what the Promised Messiah presented to, 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 to our fellow Muslim brothers, that this belief of yours in, in, in believing in the ascension of Isa and his, you know, um, his, his, his descent in the, in the latter days is actually aiding the Christian religion. And, and, and this is historically, you know, uh, proven and, 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 and we're seeing this right now. But moving away from this, uh, you know, I've presented to you what these, you know, Christian missionaries actually thought of the Promised Messiah going forward. Because one aspect was to hold the efforts of the Christian missionaries in India. But more, more importantly, the Promised Messiah used every possible means to convey the true message of Islam to the Western countries and Britain in particular, because I think one thing it, it needs to be clear, because sometimes these Christian missionaries, you know, they, they, they portrayed the Promised Messiah as very antagonistic towards Christianity. That wasn't the case. It was only in the love of the Holy Prophet وسلم, when these, you know, Christian missionaries were, you know, writing books upon books, you know, and lying against and vilifying, you know, the, uh, the great character of the Holy Prophet وسلم, That is the time the Promised Messiah وسلم, you know, as, you know, as, as a great lover does. He stood, at, you know, and, and, and defended the Holy Prophet and the honor of Islam. But the main purpose of the Prophet Islam was to convey the message of true Islam. And that message of Islam is universal, as, as we know. It is for all of man, man, mankind. So in 1885, for instance, you know, when the Prophet Islam announced that he was you know, the promised reformer in the 14th century, he sent this announcement, you know, he published it in Urdu and also translated it into uh, English. And about 8,000 copies, he, he writes, were sent as registered letters to religious leaders and rulers and scholars and judges and theorists in Asia, Europe, America, wherever it was possible to send, you know, by post. And, the, and this, in, this announcement actually invited these representatives of religions and other, you know, prominent members of society to come and witness the truthfulness of Islam at Qadian. And if a sign was not to be witnessed, you know, within a year, a sum of 200 rupees, at, at that time, 200, 200 rupees were, you know, a lot per month. You know, 2,400, you know, rupees for a year would be paid as a compensation to such an individual, you know, who, who's left his livelihood and come to, you know, to see whether, whether whatever this man is claiming to be true or not. And they were all to live at the expense of the Promised Messiah, in, in, you know, in, in Qadian. So among, you know, the, the, those who, who, who received this um, announcement is an individual named Henry Steele Olcott. And this is an individual who is known as the founder or the head of the Theosophical Society. 
And uh, so, you know, we were speaking of intellectual circles. He, although, you know, did not uh, come to Qadian or he declined the offer, but he was, he actually published the Promised Messiah Islam's offer in his, in his uh, journal known as The Theosophist, as you're seeing here. Um, you know, he, he publishes it there. And the great uh, effect of that was that a man, you know, um, he's, you know, considered by, you know, major, you know, historians to be the earliest prominent Anglo-American Muslim convert. You know, he actually came across the, these adverts of the Promised Messiah Islam, and he initiated a co correspondence with the Promised Messiah Islam. And this is Promised Messiah, you know, in Promised Messiah's book, Shah Nai Haq, you can see this correspondence. He wrote letters to the Promised Messiah Islam, Promised Messiah Islam responded. And, you know, um, he became a Muslim because of this, you know, this initiation of the Promised Messiah Islam. And he actually came uh, to, uh, to, to India as well. Um, but because when he came to India, uh, this was a time when the Promised Messiah had claimed to be, uh, you know, the Promised Messiah. In, I think he came in 1892, the Promised Messiah had claimed in 1891 that he's the Messiah. And there was great uproar at the time in India. So many actually people prohibited him from visiting Qadiyah and he came as close as Lahore. To, uh, but, but he didn't go to Qadiyah to be the Promised Islam and went back. So, and, and the whole purpose was that he was actually going around in India collecting funds in order to start a mission in, in the USA. But as we know, that mission failed. Um, and, uh, but he did, you know, continue this correspondence with the Promised Messiah, Salam. And, you know, he, he, he continued to write to the Promised Messiah and has a Mufti Mubah Sadiq Sahib, Azir al companion to, you know, asking for prayers and, and stuff like that. But moving forward, um, as we don't have, uh, you know, a lot of time, is another individual by the name of Abdullah Quilliam. Now, Abdullah Quilliam, uh, you know, those who are aware of the uh, the history, the the the, the Islamic history uh, with, within within the UK, would know his name. He's someone who was a solicitor in Liverpool, um, uh, and uh, he first converted to Islam. You know, uh, he was uh, you know he was the first convert to Islam in in the British, British Isles that, that that we know of. Um, he traveled to Morocco in 1877, and he actually accepted Islam, and he started this little uh, community in in Liverpool of of, of believers, and. Through the pages of Review of Religions, you know, we find that he actually corresponded in, you know, in the lifetime of the Promised Messiah Islam in Qadian, and he asked for, you know, the papers of Review of Religions, and he published some of these, these articles in his, news, uh, in his paper, which was known as Al-Hilal, Al uh, the Crescent, at, at that time, as, as you're seeing here, the foretelling of the, the advent of the Muhammad by, by Jesus Christ. And he also, you know, pub published in his, uh, in his newspaper that the August, uh, number of the Review of Religions published at Qadian, India is full of interesting matter. The article refuting charges made by ignorant Christians with reference to our Holy Prophet is one of the ablest we have ever read upon the subject and we, co uh, and we cordially commend it to our readers' attention. So what we're seeing here is, so far what we've covered is that the promised Messiah of Islam, because this, this, Nazis have great, you know, rightly al alluded to this, that when we speak of the history of the Hamdiya Muslim community, and we were when we were researching, the, when we started this research, we only had about 10 to 15 pages on the promised Messiah of Islam, and we thought, oh, our, our history actually begins, you know, when the first missionary came here, and it all started there. But the reality is, the first missionary and the actual work was done by the promised Messiah of Islam in his lifetime. And the, and, and the corners of Britain and the West, his message reached. And, 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 and this is, you know, you're witnessing this in front of your eyes. And you're also seeing there that the Review of Religions, this is from 1905. You're seeing Abdullah William, Sheikh al-Islam, he was given the title of British Isles, write to us. I enclose you a pre preliminary list of few persons who I feel sure would greatly appreciate your offer of supplying your free journal. I, I only wish that we could offer to do the same with our journals, the Crescent and the Islamic World, but unfortunately our funds do not permit. And these, of course, were sent to, you know, um, uh, Abdullah Quilliam and the, the, the you know the list that he was that, that he had sent. Now we're moving forward to you know a different element, and we're going to be discussing what were the what were the what were the reply what what were the outcome of the efforts of the Promised Messiah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Here we see the view of religions, you know, um, which uh, those of you who know served a great purpose in conveying the message of Islam, you know, not just in the UK but throughout the world. And we see this is the first issue, January 1902. And you know, ma many of these issues, when they reach these people, this is one lady from Manchester, you know, right? He, she wrote in Urdu and, the, uh, you know, wrote in English, but this was translated in Al Badr newspaper of 1905. She writes, Dear Mirza Ghulam Muhammad, at first when I read about you, I desired to write to you, but I couldn't think of anything. And what may I write to a man like the Promised Messiah? 
and 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 I I, I must include here some, many of uh, some of these people didn't actually you know come forward and said that we do bad, but you're seeing that the groundwork is being done by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and that these individuals are actually under there's a time when they are totally ignorant of Islam, and the picture that's being portrayed to them by the Christian missionaries and clergy and that Islam is a very backward religion and you know. Um, it's, it's some something to not believe in, but here you have, and you know, a lay, lay, lady writing, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this for the benefit of our listeners. I read some of your teachings in the paper of your religions, which are regularly sent to me from Qadian. I'm happy that the truth of God is being established. The pure faith which was preached by Jesus and Muhammad is is forgotten by the world, but the time has come about which God said He would vigorously shake up the world. Now everything seems as if it is changing the the religious world as well as the secular world. I was pleased to know that you, you preach of peace and coherence. I always used to doubt how true religion can be spread by the sword. So this, this, this is some, something that you're seeing that she must have been taught by someone that Islam was spread by the sword, uh, you know, the sword. And this is the promised Messiah's teachings that are, you know, eliminating these ideas from, you know, from these in, indigenous people. There is no, there's not a doubt that it is permitted only for self-defense. I am pleased to know that you live under a British rule where you have the right to freedom of thought and expression. I've also read about a prophecy which you made 25 years ago, and I'm delighted to read the virtuous teachings mentioned in the Review of Religions. And I hope that you will be successful in your work of spreading the truth. Your servant in work of God, S. N. Rigve, Manchester, England. So this is what you're seeing here. And also, you know, move, moving forward, is there were individuals who wrote to the Promised Messiah and there, was, there, there were individuals who actually came and visited the Promised Messiah Islam in Qadiyan. Now Qadiyan is, you know, is, 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 is a remote place, is an unknown village, uh, you know, in, in the province of Punjab. You know, at the time of the Promised Messiah the access to Qadiyan was very difficult. And it was only, you know, uh, possible by the means of mules and, you know, horses. And, and people actually preferred to walk. And this is, the, the, you know, at that time, the, Allah the Almighty informed the Promised Messiah of Islam that Fahana and Tuana and Watura Fabainam Nas, that the time has arrived when you will be helped and made well known to, you know, well known among people. And Yatuna min Kulli Fajinamik, that people will come to you in numbers, that the track on which they travel will become deep. And this is what we see. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to present to you just two examples. We have many, and inshallah, this will be published. In, in, our, uh, in, in the first Wali 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 of our history. For instance, we have an individual here, Professor Griswold, who um, you know, wrote two papers. He actually came to Qadiyan, met the Promised Messiah, Salam, sat with him, asked him various questions, and, he, and then he published two, and, and they're probably known as the first uh, introduction to the Promised Messiah from an external. Now, this is, so, this is someone who is, of course, an opponent of the Promised Messiah. He's a Christian. He's a prof he was a professor at the former college, Lahore. Um, and 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 lay, lay, lay later the two um, papers that he published were entitled Mirza Ghulam Ahmad the Mehdi Messiah of Qadian, which was read out in Lodhiana in 1902, and he also wrote the Messiah of Qadian, which was read out at the Victoria Institute in London in the lifetime of the Promised Messiah So this is on, on on 15th May 1905. So this is before any missionary had you know any missionary actually actually came to the UK. That you know that the Promised Messiah Sallallahu message was was being read here. He was being he was being introduced in these intellectual societies. You know what what the claim of the you know the Promised Messiah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, and you're you're you're, re you're reading here from the Daily News um, Tuesday 16:19 or I think five it is a new Messiah, and it tells you what the Victoria Institute actually is. Um, moving forward, we all we have we also have you know another you know um, actually a pious individual because as I said among those who actually you know, came to meet the Promised Messiah of Islam. Some came out of curiosity, you know, for research purposes, but some actually came with, with an open heart. And this is, you know, Muhammad Abdul Haq Charles F. Silverwhite, who actually came from Australia, and he was on an official tour in, 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 in India where, you know, he was, uh, I think, met by Azar uh, Mufti Muhammad Saad, Saad Sadiq Sahib, and as a Muhammad Mufti Muhammad Sadiq Sahib, it's very interesting to, uh, to, to, to note uh, the, prom the, pr the promised Messiah, you know, when, uh, you know, when Professor Rage as well, in 1908, before the passing away of the Promised Messiah, Professor Rage is another in individual who came to meet the Promised Messiah, the Promised Messiah, when he was informed about this, the Promised Messiah laughed and he said, Mufti Sahib is always after these Westerners, like he, you know, he, he brings them to me, you know, so, 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 so th th this is an in individual who met the Promised Messiah in Qadiyan and, uh, and look what he says, he says, nothing astonished me more. Among all the extraordinary incidents during my missionary travels, then the finding of myself in the sacred place and face to face with this Messiah. Eventually, when I was presented to him 
And eyes looked into eyes. He knew me to be Abdul Haq, which of course means the slave of truth. And I knew him to be divinely appointed, one to call the truth uh, to true believers, the faithful together again to make the world of Islam, uh, the make the world safer of Islam. The Muslim confidences, the Muslim confidences that followed betokened the love of God between us. Soul spoke to soul through spirit after Allah had joined them by the means of miraculous meeting. Finally, after long months of deliberation and separation, no wonder then that I made the declaration in the Review of Religions in April 1906 that I have become the member of the Ahmadiyya Society of Qadiyan. So, you know, this is, this is, you know, the, the inkilab, as we say in Urdu, this is the, the diff, the, the, this, this is the, the outcome of, you know, the promised Messiah, the Islam's efforts. And this is for us to actually realize because Hazrat Khalifa al sermons, you know, uh, on, on the companions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I'm going off topic from here. The purpose of those, those, those sermons is not just an historical account that such and such thing happened at this and this time. But it is to encourage us that what is the purpose of our coming here in, 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 in these Western countries? We didn't come here, you know, mainly to, you know, for, for, um, for worldly gains. But our true purpose here was to spread the message of Islam and to live Islam. So this is the message of this, you know, this short uh, presentation or, you know, lecture that, 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 that has been organized by the Talim Department is to encourage our, you know, our MD brothers and sisters to read more on the Prophet Islam. And without this knowledge, you would not be able to defend Islam and the Promised Messiah, Ali Sattu Islam. And moving forward, uh, lastly, um, very briefly, we're going to be discussing something that's um, known as a true grand signs for the West. I think my bad battery is slow. Nasir Sab, if you could take over from here, I'm going to just uh, plug plug in my battery. And if you could explain a bit more about the true grand signs that the Promised Messiah Islam, you know, uh, prophesies with regards to Dawi and 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 also Pe Pegit. Are you really long? No, just two, two two minutes. Give me a second, please. Can I? Okay, as As Mawlana Rahim Sahib has mentioned to us, he, what Hazrat Muslim Islam actually did is that he halted the onslaught of the Christian missionaries in, in the attack against the Holy Prophet and against the attack of Islam. And he saved millions of Muslims from. I would say a conversion, which at that time they had no answers to. They had they had no unity. There was as it is today, and he dumbfounded the opponents. And this volume that I mentioned earlier, inshallah, will be printed in the next few months. And I urge all, every household to have one. But what we saw was that he silenced his opponents, and he reversed the flow where his message, rather than an attack being taken on. He reversed the attack in defense, in terms that he defended Islam, so much so that he took this discussion or this discourse here in, in Europe and the West. And in particular, what we saw also was how the missionaries of the Christian Christian missionaries themselves failed in um, coming against Hazul. But what also happened was that they themselves, not only the as Hazrat Muslim Islam said, the time this was a time for me to appear. All the Christian missionaries, all the Christian, the Christian faith, all the other faiths were talking about a, a Messiah coming and a second coming. So we saw claimants of such of such claims. We saw them within Islam, like in Sudan, and we saw them in even in in Paris, and we saw some in the United States and here in the UK, and. What we saw was that Hazrat Islam, there were lots coming, who were coming and saying, we are the Messiah. And as we see in Paris, some will put in insane homes. But Hazrat Islam made his declaration. And then when news came to Hazur that so-and-so has claimed to be a Messiah and appointed of God, that Hazur then defended his rightful claim. He, he, he challenged them and said that this is not, um, you, you, you cannot, you are not, you are a false claimant. And are you ready to take over, Rahil Sam? So you're on silence, Rahil Sam. You're on mute. Um, sometimes I like to press that button. Rahil Sam, you're on mute. Yes, love. I'm muting myself. Um, can, you, can, you, can, can you see the screen? Yes, yeah, so I've just mentioned, and I've just brought it yes. here, where, exactly. where, where some false claimants have come. Yeah. 
uh, who claim to be the Messiah at the same time as Muslim Islam. Uh, Absolutely, and and you know th th this is uh, very few examples. We've, we've we've got plenty of these newspaper reports um, with uh, you know about the prom 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 promise Messiah Salam talking about how you know the promised messiah has challenged you know these these ind ind individuals who thought themselves to be you know the the you know the 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 the, the, the messiah of the time and and the first one as 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 we know uh, you know people people have spoken about is da dawi and dawi actually you know claimed to you know claimed to be the you know the elijah the promised messiah salam, when he wrote to him and i'm i'm briefly mentioning this you know think thinking of the time at hand because Inshallah, ho hopefully we'll be able to do a part two where we'll be di discussing much more, you know, with regards to what the second volume of the for, of, of our history covers as well. And, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wrote to him and he responded with great, uh, you know, uh, anger and, 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 and great pride to say, because at, at the time he was a very wealthy individual. Uh, you know, the, uh, I think the Caesar, you've been to the city of uh, Zion or Zion, what, how, how, however you pronounce it. Um, how you know wealthy this individual was, and when the promised Messiah of Islam, you know, challenged him and, and and responded, you know, with 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 uh, you know that that if I, I I don't want to reply to these flies and gannets, and if if I was to step on them, I, I would crush them. So the promised Messiah said that that the truthful you know the truthful of God would would, would sur sur survive the other, and we see that this individual um, he he died a very humiliating death, you know. He was uh, he, embezz he, he embezzled you know the money that was being you know given to him and you know the, uh, these illicit relationships with 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 other females etc as well. So this is how Allah the Almighty you know uh, you know disgraced one and, and and we see today and how Allah the Almighty you know raised the other and we see that his message and and I think one of the things that is to realize is that these individuals are only being mentioned. They are they are they are lost in history. You know, nobody knows them or mentions them. They're, they're only being mentioned because of the Promised Messiah And that is the beauty of, 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 of the whole thing is, if it wasn't for the Promised Messiah they wouldn't even be mentioned, they wouldn't even be part of the dis discussion that we, ha where we are having today. So these are two, uh, you know, new newspapers that I've mentioned. This one newspaper, uh, uh, you know, is from, uh, you know, from the British Library, the, 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 Sun, 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 the Sun Sunday Circle, it published the pic picture of the Promised Messiah And this was, you know, Promised Messiah Salaam's Prophecy with regards to Pe Peget, uh, you know, in 1902, when this individual claimed to be the Messiah, uh, and uh, so we we have a latest research uh, that's you know a detailed research that's coming out also very soon with with regards to this prophecy, because the difference between Dawi and Peget is that Pe Pe Peget survived, uh, you know, the death ordeal, whereas Dawi died, and the difference being is when the Promised Messiah of Islam wrote to wrote to Dawi. We know, and we have a written response that came from Da Dawi. You know, a very, um, a very, you know, a, a, a derogatory, you know, uh, sort of re remark, remark about the Promised Messiah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whereas from Peget, we see a complete silence, and there's nothing at all. And and the Promised Messiah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, actually sent his companion to his house. And we have, Inshallah, Taala, when when that series just comes out, his name was Sheikh Rahmatullah Sahib, who who actually was here in the UK. Uh, uh, you know, and he actually went to Somerset, his house, and he, he demanded that he sees Piget, so you know, to confirm that the message of the Prophet has has reached him. Because look, look at it here. How many of these newspapers that have actually published this, you know, this uh, uh, this this challenge of the Promised Messiah Islam, but there's no re response from Piget at all. And then the research will, inshallah, Allah, you know, prove that post 1902 up until you know uh, his his death, his his rest of his life was of complete sec secrecy. He lived, uh, you know, in his complete secrecy, and whatever they practiced, or whatever they preached, or whatever they did, was within their, within their, uh, within their abode, and nobody else from the outside was allowed in. And a a, a whole court case uh, by the Bishop of Bath and Wells was 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 brought forward against uh, the claimant divinity, uh, John John Hugh Smith Piggott, and he was defrocked from the ch uh, from 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 the Church of Eng England. You know, uh, on 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 the charges of immorality that he had, you know, he had illicit relationships with other other women from you know, from whom they, you know he he also had kids. So a detailed research, inshallah, will be coming will be coming forward, and and this. I think so. Rahil Saab has, and that that judge, you know, the disposition of the holy orders of 
or Smith Pigott, head of a, a, you know, Agapamon, was affected by the Bishop of Bath and Wells uh, in the Cathedral of Wells on Saturday, the bishop, and, and he was basically defrocked. Lastly, I want to mention, and you know, ho hopefully, you know, we can, inshallah, conclude on this and see if you, if you would like to add some, some, something on there, is that well, the- We have a couple of questions, so maybe a minute. Of course, just 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 a minute. I, I want to end this. That the purpose of the promised Messiah, that was you know, we're mentioning the promised Messiah, some defeated Christianity. He asked, this was all in response to the attack. Whereas the true purpose of the promised Messiah, as I mentioned, was to convey the true message of Islam. And this is what we see just you know, a few days before the passing away of the promised Messiah. The promised Messiah wrote Pegham Sulo, right? As we know, the book, um, you know, it it. Uh, it translates to a message of peace, right? You know, among, among, among the Muslims, the Christians, and 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 uh, and the Hindus, this was also reported. Uh, you know, this uh, was also uh, this lecture was also reported in the September issue of the British Journal, known as the Review of Reviews. And after quoting from the paper, it is written that in this practical form, the pe the, the message of peace may evoke no response, but if the Co Constantinople earthquake provokes sympathetic uh, sy seismic disturbances in India, the solemn warnings of the Promised Messiah Islam and Mahdi may have their effect. So with that, you know, I would, I would like to end and of course we welcome any question that's there. Uh, but briefly, uh, we have presented to you the, you know, the endeavors of the Promised Messiah Islam, lest we not forget what our purpose of arrival in this country is and what our responsibilities are. Jazakumullah. Uh, to both gentlemen for for such a comprehensive lecture, um, I mean the, with the along with the interactive uh, presentation, um, I'm sure the part two would be very much welcomed by the viewers, um, and to to hear the further facts. Uh, we have questions, but I'm, I'm conscious of the um, uh, the time here. So just uh, one question, if if you may, one of you can answer that. Uh, uh, how many people during the lifetime of the promised Messiah Islam came forward claiming to be the Messiah? I think so far, we, what, what, what we know of is, as, as I mentioned, uh, Dawi and Pe Peget. Um, there were other such claimants, that, but but they were insist insignificant, have, you know, have, having no following at all. Uh, Nasisa may mentioned the Mahdi of Dongola who was an ind individual. Who actually claimed to be the Mahdi, and he, you know, he, he actually started this whole, uh, you know, jihad. You know, he, he waged a war against, uh, I think, the French or whoever at the, at, the, at the time were were in charge of the land, and 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 so the British. So, so the whole concept of jihad at the time in in in, in the minds of the Western public, just as ter, 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 today, you know, history repeats itself, was of some you know very violent of you know of converting people with compulsion. And and this so this this is what the promised Messiah Islam you know fought against. On one hand, he he defended Islam with great courage, and he also told his community to be loyal to the country that they live live in, and, and to be law law abiding citizens, and to contribute to the society. And this is what we see here in today. You know, hundred years or uh, hundred and twenty twenty years that we've been here, that the Ahmadiyya Muslim community is at the forefront, you know, of 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 of, of leading. You know, in, in serving mankind and you know, in, in taking care of the society that we live in. Uh, Jazakallah. Uh, we have got only one minute for this last question. There are many questions, but I just want to finish with this off, and then uh, we'll end up with the silent prayer. So, this last question, if you can do a very quick response, is: What work is being done by the history department that we can look forward to in um, future? Masha, I have to say, well, good to Allah, quite a bit of work is being done now. Um, we're gathering what we are gathering right now, which I need all of you who viewers who can, is that we have an archives project going on where we are trying to gather photographs and maybe voice recordings or video recordings of historical significance. And we have a link that was sent out recently through your presidents. And if you and it's an online links on the Jamaat website where you can literally just upload from your computers. So if you have a recording of pictures and the quality, if we, if we think is of obviously not everything will be useful from a historical perspective, but a large number will be, then we'll contact you and try and scan in, send something, or we'll ask you to scan and put the quality in. But the real work that we're doing is gathering, initially, to gather the information. What Raheel's talked about, I mentioned, is three years' work. Although there's 330 pages of his work, Alhamdulillah, but it's really worth looking at. So it's, it's time-consuming. So we need the assistance of the Jamaat members to upload archives. I know today 
or yesterday, Malala Rahilsa went to uh, the mission, one of the mission houses, and he, he got a lot of the historical records there. So we're gathering an archive. But our idea is that we will show, after the, the establishment of Al Fazim Islam's demise of the UK mission and of the responsibilities endowed upon every single Ahmadi by His Holiness um, the Prophet Islam and the Khulafa on spreading the message of Islam. And that's our responsibility. And the idea is that the history project is a way for people to understand them, their, their purpose of being here. And inshallah, that, that is what you're going to look forward to. Lots of examples on direction of Khalifa Musi's uh, from Khalifa Abu's time to present, inshallah. Uh, Jazakallah, Jazakallah, Nasir Din Sahib, the Mir Sahib, uh, uh, for Naib Hirami Sahib, for, uh, for this detailed answer. I also thank uh, Mulana Rahil Ahmed Sahib for uh, delivering this lecture in the presence of our uh, Talim Secretary, National Secretary, Nimit Dimur Ramon Sahib. So I just to end this. Um, the viewer, thank you for very much for watching uh, this program. Please don't forget the normal lectures will continue. Monday is the Urdu lecture and on Tuesday, the English lecture from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Can I just request now Naipa Sahib to lead us in the silent prayer, please? Amin. 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 Amin.